Thank you very much, and it's good to have the opportunity to be here with you, and thank you very much for a very enlightening and very interesting sessions that we've had through the day. But I will ask, start by asking the following question to all of you, and that is, have you ever felt the blessing of the forest? Because if you've seen light spilling through the green and golden leaves on a spring day in Norway, or running on a springy ground beneath the pine trees, then you felt the blessing of the forest. But never have I felt so blessed as when watching the sun rise from the, from the, from the Amazon, birds and animals rejoicing its survival, feeling a smile widening on my face from the pure joy of living. And if you have never felt that joy, go search for it in the forest, and you will find that your life adds on a new purpose, making certain that we and our children can enjoy the joy and life of the forest. I was going to ask you if you think, uh, if you agree that this is something that's worth fighting for, but I pretty much uh, understand that that was the point. Now, three reasons. The forest is our lung. It makes our planet livable for us and all the others. Killing our lung is not wise. Secondly, the forest is our treasure chest. In the forest, you can find the most biodiversity, and this goes for Norway as well as for most countries. In, and I will just bring out two things and two small items that you can find just to show how biodiversity is a treasure chest that we need to take care of. In 1969, cyclosporin, um, the, the fungus cyclosporin was found in Norway. That is a fungus that was vital for making it possible to transplant, uh, it's called transplantation, of organs from one person to another without the blood stopping, right? Coagulating. It was vital, it was found by chance, by chance. And it's just one source of biodiversity and how it makes life easier for people. Now, the second is one that was discovered in 2008. And it has a very strange name. It was found in Ecuador, in Amazon. It's called Pesta, uh, Pestaloptiopsis microspora. It's a small fungus, that too. It grows on plastic underwater. And the way it works is that it dissolves plastic while growing on it. This can help us in solving our waste problems because most, it can help us by solving our waste problems simply because it eats plastic. And from what I know and the people I know, most people don't like eating plastic. So this fungus can help us. So the forest is our treasure. And thirdly, the forest is our home of life. It's the home, the life and the income of people, as we have heard earlier on today. And all of this must be taken into consideration to strengthen people's outcome and ownership of the forest. And we should not be simple do-gooders. We should be realists. Because siding with the people, animals and forest, realizing that there is a lot of money in forest killing, even though most, but not all, have a lot to earn on letting the forest live. And simple and easy, the world's climate is in peril. Global mean temperature is rising much faster in the last decades than previous decades in the 20th century. And we have visible consequences, and I meet with them as a development minister on going to El Salvador, meeting with people who are hit by hurricanes, going to Bangladesh, where 30 million people live one meter above sea level and see their islands that they were living on will be disappearing in the water in, in the decades to come. And we're seeing the drought in the south of Sahara that kills people in a way that it didn't do before, because it doesn't come every 10th year. It doesn't come every fifth year anymore. It comes with two years apart. And it makes it impossible for people to build the, the resilience. But let me talk about the lungs. Because one thing is for sure, we will not reach the two degree target without reducing deforestation and forest degradation. And the IPCC report of 2007 calculated that the world's forests account for 17% of global emissions larger than the emissions from the entire global transport sector. That's how big deforestation is. And it's easy not to cut trees. And I would add on, as coming from an oil country, just as easy as letting oil be staying underneath the ground. 
But the world's tropical forests are disappearing at an alarming rate. Each year, on average, approximately 30 million hectares tropical forest is lost, and that is corresponding to almost three times the land mass of Costa Rica. Now, secondly, I'll say that the forest is the home of people, because there is more than one mil billion people on this planet who rely on forest for their livelihoods. Red Plus is not an alternative to development, it's a development alternative. And I think that is a saying, a quote that should be used in many occasions. Because the services that the forest provides are crucial for development and economic growth. And I will give a couple of examples. Forests are people's wealth, and in particular, poor people's wealth. In Brazil, ecosystem services account for nine out of 10 reals for the rural people's gross domestic product. Forest, nine out of 10 reals. Secondly, forests are crucial to global rainfall patterns, and thus agriculture. The Congo Basin and Amazon rainforest affects rainfall patterns in the US Midwest, America's red basket. Tell that to the Americans. In the Brazilian uh, Amazon, forests are crucial in delivering hydropower. Trees generate participation, deforestation leads to less rain and less water in the rivers, and that drives the turbines in the power plants. In Kenya, Incidence of malaria as a result of deforestation is estimated to have cost 200, 237 million shillings, that means about 2.7 million US dollars, by 2010 in the form of health costs to the government and losses in labor productivity. Most will gain on protecting the forest, but not all, and that is why it is still cut down. And here the pri private sector plays a crucial role for creating green economic development that does not lead to deforestation. I will say particularly for the production of agricultural commodities, the private sector is crucial. Cattle ranging, soya and palm oil production may lead to deforestation or it may not. For example, through better aerial planning and use of degraded lands, companies are already demonstrating change. And I welcome the commitment by the Consumer Goods Forum to achieve zero deforestation. And I'm encouraged by the engagement on, on leaders like Unilever and Nestlé. And we will follow you closely. Because it is possible to make money in a green way. Because we should go from depletion of resources to a sustainable use of our planet. Otherwise, we are simply virus, as Agent Smith described humanity in the movie The Matrix. And I, will, I will look at the results that has been achieved over the last couple of years. Because Brazil is the global leader in demonstrating that sustainable development and re, uh, reduced deforestation may be achieved at the same time. Several years in a row, though unfortunately the, the, not the last one, but several years in a row deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon has been record low and decreasing. Far lower than anything registered since forest monitor, monitoring at the systemic level became, uh, began in 1988. These reductions are delivering close to a billion tons of CO2 emissions reductions annually. And that's about the outlet of the total of Germany. At the same time, Brazil has had economic growth, impressive, and is at the current state number six or seventh biggest economy in the world, competing with the Britons con uh, continuously. And others are following Brazilian lead, and you were, to you were talking about Indonesia earlier. Indonesia's President Yoroyono has, uh, has a vision to deliver a similarly groundbreaking achievement. He has pledged to cut greenhouse gas emissions by up to 41% by 2020, and up to 90% of this is from reductions in, uh, in, uh, by Red Plus and the peatlands. And Guyana, a country with 85% forest cover and very low deforestation rates, has this is decided to leave 99.5% of its forest standing. The proceeds from their pay for performance climate and forest partnership with Norway, they will use for investment to crea create a low carbon economy, among other things, putting the entire country on clean renewable energy through investments in hydro and solar power. Now, what can a small country like Norway do? And if a small country like Norway can do it, then bigger countries can do it too. Now, through the International Climate and Forest Initiative, Norway has act is actively engaged bilaterally and multilaterally in all the major forest basins in the world. The Amazon, the Congo Basin, and in Southeast Asia. 
And since we started our efforts in 2008, we have contributed to making Red Plus a central part of the international climate negotiations. I think that's important. We are preparing it for its in inclusion in the future in international climate agreement because projects are good, but politics and policies of countries need to change. It is vital on the national levels in countries to stop deforestation. We have supported Brazil's efforts to significantly reduce deforestation, which uh, the government in Brazil has done with great su success. Our partnership with Indonesia has contributed to more open political debate around the country's environmental and economic development. And as was just said, uh, the steps have been massive when it comes to creating the awareness and going on and saying agreed development is possible. Through our support to multilateral institutions such as the World Bank and the UN, in particular the UN Red Programme, we have provided support to national red efforts in more than 40 countries. And I will take this, uh, this opportunity, since after all it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a birthday, right? Mm -hmm. I will take this opportunity to congratulate the UN Red Programme for your efforts during the last five years. Because of your endless efforts, several countries such as Vietnam, Tanzania, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ecuador and many more are already advancing national strategies for reduced deforestation. Important topics such, such as good governance, anti-corruption, gender and the links between forest livelihoods and green growth are now climbing the Red Plus agenda. And we remain determined uh, we remain a determined supporter of the program and also welcomes other donors and underscore that welcomes other donors because we need to have a joint effort. <laughs> we'll be holding a conference on this topic in, in Oslo in October and I would close my remarks by saying that the case for Red Plus is overwhelming. The importance of forest it must, is much more significant recognized now than what was realized in Rio 20 years ago, or even in Bali just five years ago. We are prepared to continue to scale up uh, our uh, investments. We have now uh, set a level at 500 million US dollars per year as part of our multilateral mechanism, but we want to have other people on board, other countries on board, and if that happens, we are going to increase. And that is a, a, a promise from a, a complete national assembly in, in Norway across the different party lines. Because a few billions dollars, a few billion dollars annually to reward emission reduction from forest in the years leading up to 2020 could have transformative impact on an issue of utmost urgency. And we believe that we all share the responsibility to address deforestation together that success is only possible if we work together towards shared objectives, developing countries by recognizing the contribution of forests to rural people and rural development, developed countries by rewarding forest countries that deliver, the private sector by cleaning, cleaning up the supply chains through various means and being innovative in the ways to do business, and civil society in order to assist all the three different paths needed to take. I hope that in 20 years' time, uh, I, I will be able to go with my children. I, I don't have any children right now, but I hope to be able <laughs> to go with my children in 20 years' time to the forest, look them in the eyes and say that we have been able to stop dangerous climate change, we have been able to save the forest, and then afterwards sit back towards, a, lean back towards a tree trunk and let them see, see them see the light spilling through the different green and golden leaves, see them bouncing on the forest floor and live the sunrise with the people and animals of the forest. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>